guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be planting some fall crops and then I'm gonna continue on with my potato harvest. That's the goal for the day. Oh, good protective barrier there, dude. That will protect our crops for sure. Any critters wanting to come in and eat stuff, huh? I'm just doing this one for now. That's a good I, idea. I'm gonna do some more of those right there and right there. Later, like later when, when we're planting. I'm just wanting to protect everything. Yes, I know you want to protect everything. You do a good job of it. Oh, <laughs> Russell. Russell, have you had a rough morning? What's up, dude? You've been fighting? All right, guys, so our raised bed vegetable garden is where we're going to be working this morning. And as you can see, it is very full still. We have a lot of productivity going on. I mean, the productivity is spilling out into the driveway. This is a melon plant right here, kind of crawling over the lavender, and there are a ton of melons. So I thought we would do a little walkthrough, and then I'll show you where we're gonna be planting. So starting here at the entryway, we're gonna to have to watch our steps so that we don't run into your barrier, but these containers are absolutely gorgeous. Carolee Petite Pink Gara as a centerpiece here. Look at that. There's a honeybee working it right now. Supertunia Vista Jazzberry, Sparkling Amethyst Superbina, and then Supertunia Raspberry Rush, I think, right? That's the striped one. They are doing amazing, have not been trimmed at all this season, just rocking, looking beautiful. Okay, as we enter in, you can see the center container that we recently hacked back. <laughs> uh, it was looking flushed out, there wasn't much color on it. So I came in and I mean, I cut the heck out of it uh, to where it was just little green plants left and they are coming back beautifully. Let's just start with this raised bed here. We've got some dwarf sunflowers, which are about ready to go for it. You can see all of their buds right here. I've got those on both sides. I thought that would be so happy to see the beautiful yellow blooms. We have tomatoes just going crazy. I'm taking the no trim approach this year, which is so awesome. I get way more tomatoes. As long as you have room to let them roll and you don't mind how mangy they get. I mean, we've just picked so, so many tomatoes. It's amazing. They're just, they are everywhere, everywhere loaded. Also in this bed, we came in fairly recently. It feels like it was recent and we planted some bachelor's buttons. Just wanted some later summer flower activity in here. And in this bed, we have carrots from our spring crop and there were four rows. And I think we've pretty much picked everything off of the outer two rows and now we're working on the middle rows. We planted a, what kind did I put in here? Suyao's, did I put a tag? Oh yeah, Suyao long cucumber and I see one. I see a gorgeous one in here. They are curved and uh, like a tiny bit spiny, but they're one of my favorite cucumbers because they stay very firm in the center. They have seeds just like all the other cucumbers, but they don't get that softness in the center, which I don't like. I like my cucumbers to be really crisp. I think I see another one over here. They're probably all over in here. If I start looking, oh, look at that beauty. Oh, I started these late though too, at the same time I planted the bachelor's buttons. Our limelight hydrangea standard looking amazing. Colette Rose is throwing some more blooms. This is always such a beauty right here been keeping it fairly pruned up so we can get through doing a little bit of a better job at that this year than I did last year. And we did toss a bench right here because, and it's kind of, it's right underneath the canopy of this elderberry because Samantha loves to ride her tricycle up and down this brick walkway. And that way we can sit and enjoy it. And she can just play to her heart's content. And turning back around, you can see these two beds on my left. This is a three by four and a three by six. There's nothing currently planted in this one. So we're gonna plant that one today. And this one, I did seed some didiscus in here the same time we planted the cucumber and the bachelor's buttons and not so great of luck. It could be one that wants to germinate in cooler temperatures or something, who knows. I haven't really done a lot of reading on that one. I just tossed them in to see what would happen. Some of them came up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this little cloach thing. It's not a cloach. I don't know what you'd call that. It's kind of like a little trellis. We're just gonna pop this up in here. We'll let whatever didiscus is in here grow, but I'm gonna toss some Oregon sugar pod peas right in here. And then we've got a sun sugar cherry tomato plant right here, which there are a bunch in here, but I came in and picked a bunch yesterday. Yeah, these are yum. So good. And in this same bed, which I probably should do a little bit of trimming, I've got peppers. They're still growing like crazy and producing tons of produce underneath the canopy of the tomatoes. 
There's a red bell in there, Serrano right here. And in this bed, much the same. We've got more pepper plants. You can see some beautiful red bells in there. Another tomato, this is Aroma. Beautiful. And then in this bed, you can see the sunflowers here. And then we've got a tomato. This is a super fantastic tomato. That one is an heirloom pineapple. But I have a Mazel basil in this space and it got so big and like top heavy that the whole plant just kind of bent over. All of them did. So this plant bent over. This one bent over and broke. That one bent over. It originates under the tomato and kind of goes into the walkway. But I'm still using off of these plants. So even though this is probably the most wild looking bunch here. Did you find a tomato there, dude? Yeah, it was right in there. Oh, playing croquet with it. Anyway, I'm just going to leave those until Frost takes them because I'm still using a lot of them. And in this bed, we've got Cosmos, which was a late seeding. So we'll get some color here soon. This is the Tuscany melon. And there are two hills <laughs> in this a three by four race bed. Look at this. Holy moly. And then I planted more because, you know, we needed more up here. These went in later than this batch right here. I know they're huge, aren't they, bud? They are everywhere, but they are looking so gorgeous. And there are melons all over. I'm not going to tromp around. Well, maybe I'll tromp around a little bit. There's an opening. There's another melon there. There's another one. There's another one right down in here. I don't know if you can see that. Right in there. Doesn't that one look like a beauty? Yeah, that one looks super big. Mm -hmm. and then we've got our blackberry plants right here. And then we've got one more three by six with nothing in it. So we'll be planting that today. As far as fall season crops go, we're basically just doing a repeat of what we planted in the spring. So those types of crops that can handle cooler temperatures. Uh, carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, greens, like spinach, lettuce, kale, chard, uh, radishes, did I say beets already? Peas, green onions. Uh, there's probably more that I'm missing, but that's kind of what we do around here. I'm not even growing all of those this year. I just don't have the kind of space to dedicate. We're mostly gonna be focusing in on greens and peas. We're doing American spinach, the Alassanato kale, Tuscan baby leaf kale, butterhead lettuce, that's the Casey variety, and organ sugar pod peas. A couple of really important pieces of information you want to know when you get ready to plant your fall crops. One is your average first frost date. You can find out by Googling that average first frost date and your zip code, and that should give you the date. So I looked mine up last year and it said October 4th. I looked it up again today and it says October 9th. So you figure out that date, then you count back to the day you're currently on, which for me, that means I have 46 days. 46 day window to get my crops going. The nice thing about what we are planting today and most fall season crops is that they can handle a light frost, which is all you really get right in the beginning, our light frost, which is like 32, right around 32 to 28, and then a hard frost is 28 and below. The other important piece of information you do wanna know is the maturity day of the crop you wanna plant. So you wanna make sure that whatever you're planting is gonna fit within your growing window. Uh, so most of the things I'm growing today, the greens are usually like anywhere like 40-ish days or so, 40 to 50 days. Uh, but you do wanna keep in mind also that as you approach that first frost date, you know, the days are getting shorter, the temperatures are getting cooler, so they will slow down. Their growth will slow down. So you could add a week or two weeks onto that maturity day to give yourself a buffer just to make sure that things will grow. I'm getting after this project a bit later than I normally do, but I didn't really have in mind to grow a ton of fall crops this year anyway. What I think I'm gonna do is plant our spinach and butterhead lettuce in one bed, our kale in another three by six bed, and then we'll pop the peas in right where we looked in that smaller raised bed, which Douglas is now laying in. You got your tools? And I got one. Good. Very nice. Okay, we're gonna be amending as we normally do with some Biotone starter fertilizer, and then I'll be top dressing with Lanancy compost. Right there. As far as planting goes, I'm just gonna follow the directions on the seed packet, I think. Are the greens like a quarter of an inch deep or something? The peas, I usually go about a half inch deep and I space those about four inches apart. Yeah, it looks like the spinach and kale are both half inch deep and then the lettuce is a kind of a surface sow situation. So I'll just put the seed down and put a little bit of compost over the top of it. All right, guys, here we go.
all done. So again, in this bed, we have the Oregon Sugar Pod peas. In this one, I did two rows of the American spinach and then two rows of the Casey Butterhead lettuce. I also found another cucumber and picked some serranos. And in this one, I split it up differently. I did the back half with the Lasanato kale because it gets so big. And then the front half has the tender baby leaf. And I thought since we found this extra cucumber, now we have three, we could run inside quick and make my favorite cucumber salad. I'll show you how I do that. Uh, it utilizes serrano peppers. I got three of those. And then we need to run to the root cellar and grab a shallot, which has already been harvested, but it needs to marinate in the fridge for a while. So I thought we could prepare it, get it marinating in the fridge while we go harvest potatoes. It's nice to have every space filled up in this garden again. So there's our cucumbers, there's our peppers. our shallot it's 45 in the root cellar it feels so good in there are there some big ones out there yep. you can show them to me okay really we're gonna take a pumpkin field trip before cucumber salad real quick oh look one of the boxwoods is wearing paul's hat <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you want me to show you a really cool one i'll show you one you want to see a big orange one just follow me these are kind of pokey so if you can walk over them that'd be good daddy's gonna cut those down okay and walk over the stems Okay, you gotta, you, well, that's kind of a big one, yeah, for sure. But let's poke through here. Try not to step on any of the stems. Now look. Oh my gosh. So there's a whole bunch of white ones in here, too. There's another big one that's gonna turn orange right back in there. Our Hubbard squash, our blue Hubbard, is not looking too hot over here. Oh, but the squash are looking pretty. Oh, they've got squash bugs. That's why. Oh, shame. We need to get after those. You want to know something, though? The Blue Hubbard squash is always a host plant for um, squash bugs, and I've heard it from several different uh, farmers mm -hmm. that if you plant a Blue Hubbard somewhere in your the vicinity of your other vine crops, they'll always attack the Blue Hubbard and stay away from your others. So maybe we just let this one go, and that's why it looks so sad. There's our produce. I might need to go grab another shallot, but that's kind of a big one. Here is the recipe, and I will try to remember to type it down below so it's easier to read. Uh, but basically we use sugar, cucumber, boiling water, salt, chilies, shallots, and it says white vinegar. I'll use either white vinegar or the rice wine vinegar. Either one works. Okay, I just gotta try one, even though it's still warm. Mmm. -hmm. That's so good. I'm pretty sure I've made this salad for you guys before, but it kind of just worked out perfectly that we had the perfect amount of cucumbers. And now this will accompany our dinner. Okay, let's go harvest potatoes.
potatoes have been harvested. I can't even believe it. And today we got six crates of potatoes. I think the first time we were out here, didn't we get three? Am I remembering that right? Anyway, lots of potatoes. I have no idea how many pounds we got out of this space. Maybe in the end, once we've got them all cleaned and all in their baskets, we can get some weights of everything. Uh, but we've already been using off of them too. The interesting thing, and I've already got all the potatoes spread out in the barn, but I have these russet Burbanks in the back of the gator that I wanted to show you. Look at these weirdo potatoes. Oh my good, <laughs> my goodness. So the main reason for knobby potatoes if you should happen to run into this in your own potato patch is a heat and or water stress especially if you have periods of dry and hot followed by cool and rainy which is exactly how our summer has been and i'm thankful for all the water uh, that we have received it's been good for everything but uh, of all the varieties of potatoes russet burbanks which is what these are are more uh, prone to show the stress signs. I pulled a lot of potatoes out of the ground and only the russets looked like this. I'm really tempted to draw faces on some of these. Kind of looks like the Loch Ness Monster a little bit. Don't you think this part looks like the sloth off of Ice Age with the eyeballs? Not this part. <laughs> Look at this. Okay, let's head to the barn and I will show you our haul from the day. And you know, the last thing out here that we have to harvest are the rest of the onions. After that happens, I'm actually going to um, tap into a water line. Let me show you. So you see how we've got the four runs of drip tape right here. Those watered all the onions and all the potatoes and then also the peppers. But we also have, if I dig around in here, well, maybe, maybe I can show you. There's a half inch black poly line somewhere around here probably somewhere where it's hard to find it. Okay, just trust me, it's there. I don't wanna dig around in here anymore. So it runs alongside here and I branched off of that. So the drip tape ends at the end of the peppers. Oh, here, see? See how the drip tape or the drip poly drip tube runs right here? And then I have individual emitters that are watering all of our tomato plants. To not waste water, what I'm gonna do is tap into that half inch black poly right here. And then I'll just put new uh, couplers. So we can still run the drip tape right here off of the same line, but we're not gonna be wasting water from this point all the way to the beginning of the row. And that will probably be a five minute fix. And then we'll, we can go the rest of the season not stressing about the water out here. Okay, now to the barn. Okay, here are the rest of the potatoes. Look at all of these. And some of them are monsters. So the red Pontiacs right here, which I didn't plant very many of them. I planted these from my own seed that I saved from last year. But hey, Aaron, what? you should come look at the size of these potatoes right here. Oh, I think this one's biggest. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Whoa. That's a monster potato. That's crazy. Yeah. So we had a few huge potatoes and then some big ones in the red Lasota category as well. Yeah, like, look at this. My word. And then right there, those are the rest of the russets. And there are some weird knobby looking potatoes, but most of these are fairly normal. German butter balls are in this section right here. Clearly, I planted the most of those. And then Yukon Golds, I think I had the fewest of those of any variety. But they are gonna sit here for the next few days just to dry. You can see that some of them look pretty dark. It's because they're still wet from the rain we got last weekend. Um, so we need to let them dry and then we will brush excess soil off of them and pack them up in the root cellar. It works to do this here in the barn because it stays, like I have the lights on in here right now, but it stays pretty dim. You don't wanna let your potatoes dry out where it's too bright because they can't be exposed to sunlight, otherwise they turn green and that's not good. Uh, so anyway, this process doesn't take very long either, just a few days. And let me show you the ones that we already have cleaned and put in the root cellar, kind of how we pack them. Okay, so you can see these harvest baskets right here. These are empty, ready for some other ones. But what we do is we choose baskets that have good airflow, number one, and then we pack these in burlap sacks just to keep excess light off of them, even though it's always dark in here. But you can see how nice these look, kind of cleaned off there. Little bit of soil on them, but that's kind of typical. And for all of these, we decided to put uh, large size potatoes toward the bottom of the basket and smaller ones toward the top because the smaller ones don't keep quite as well. So we'll use through those first. Small huckleberry golds 
and the large ones are down here oh, and all the beautiful onions i love it when it starts to fill up in here and you guys that is going to be it for today's video i'm so happy to have the fall crops in and i hope it was helpful just to see what we're doing i mean it wasn't a a comprehensive list of all the fall crops or anything like that but definitely go talk with somebody down at your local garden center or a gardener in your area just to see what they're doing and kind of time frame that's always really helpful can you hear the kids i think there's a birthday party going on next door it's a very happy sound Sounds like they're having fun. Anyway, I'm also very happy to have all the potatoes harvested. I love to harvest potatoes. It's still, it's hard work to do it. And it's been nicer this year, just taking it in a little bit of smaller chunks, but it got pretty hot today. Still, it was 90 something degrees, low 90s. It is getting cooler, but it's still pretty warm for that kind of job anyway. So I'm very happy to have that done. Now I'm gonna go inside. I'm gonna tuck into that cucumber salad. I think it's gonna be so refreshing after a day out in the heat. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.